Thank you very much, and we're very grateful to AWS to give us this platform to share the story of the butterfly. Uh, like any really good invention, it always starts with a spark, the why behind the invention, invention itself. And our story dates back to our founder. Our founder is a gentleman by the name of Jonathan Rothberg. Dr. Rothberg is a noted scientist who's best known for bringing next generation DNA sequencing to the world today. And as with all of Jonathan's great inventions, they're really based off personal experiences he has with members of his family or someone he loves. So Jonathan, and I'm sharing a story that he allows us to share, has a daughter that was born with a congenital problem, tuberous sclerosis, where she developed tumors in her body. And jo Dr. Rothberg would take his daughter and she would have MR images and high frequency ultrasound treatment of that. And he was struck by the process of how cumbersome and how inaccessible, even in modern healthcare system, imaging actually was. He did some thinking behind that and started to investigate and realize, as many of us have, that actually, despite the availability in this country, two-thirds of the world right now has no access to medical imaging. Despite all of these advances, even in modern healthcare facilities, access to medical imaging is limited. Think about this the last time either you or a family member, and we've all been there, have been to the doctor. What did you find out when they ordered a test? You had to wait to get the test. The test is performed, you had to wait to get the results. Once the results come back, you had to wait for the doctor to actually tell you what they were, and you had to wait to start treatment. Well, what if, as the slide suggests, if imaging was as accessible as a stethoscope, that when you actually saw the physician or healthcare worker, instead of ordering a test, and the test being a destination, that the test actually came out of their pocket, and the answer to that test was in their hand. And so what Dr. Rothberg really had a passion around was, how do I make medical imaging available to the world? That was the charge. He met an interesting scientist, Max Tegmark, up at MIT, who was doing some research leveraging radio telescopes to look out into space for the origin of the universe. Where did we come from? And he said to Max, I can't actually build a company out of looking out at space and looking at the ordinary universe, but if I can turn that inside and actually look into the human body, create a window into the body that's accessible to everywhere, that's something that has great value for humanity and could become a great business. Now Max said, okay, fine, that sounds good. And Jonathan says, I'll fund the start of that company if you give me the smartest kid that you got. And from that, Nevada Sanchez, who was one of our first people, came on board and the story of this device came about. So what makes this different? What did Nevada bring and what was Jonathan's vision? Jonathan's vision was he looked at ultrasound and ultrasound right now is expensive. Cart-based systems are expensive. It takes multiple devices to scan the body because they're all based on piezoelectric crystals, all of the other devices. Different frequencies, different configurations, because you need something different for the heart than you do for a carotid artery, than you need for OB. Jonathan has a history of putting great technology on silicon chips, leveraging that trillion dollar silicon industry, and he knows once you put something on a chip, world changes. How many of you have a smartphone right now? They all have cameras. How did that happen? That happened because they put it on silicon and it made it affordable. So Jonathan set out with his team with Nevada, leading this group of really brilliant scientists and said, our goal is to put ultrasound on a chip. Five years later, fast forward, we now have introduced the world's first whole body, single probe imaging system. So instead of a piezoelectric crystal device that has typically 128 imaging elements, this actually has 9,000 individual drums that vibrate and both signal sending and receiving and processing occurs right in this tiny little head. Instead of multiple probes, you have one. You can scan linear, phased, curved array. You can scan from one to 10 megahertz. Becomes really simple. So now you have an affordable device that works. It can work for all healthcare workers. Well, what's gonna be the display image? Well, what's the ubiquitous thing we all have? A smartphone. So if you take the device, you download an app, and you guys know the saying, we've got an app for that, and now you have a device that you can image with right in your pocket. So now the doctor shows up at the bedside, I have the test in my right hand, I have the answer in my left hand. And this actually brings the care as a personal physician, and I'm a vascular surgeon by trade, we find in healthcare today, electronic medical records and all the challenges of that have been pulling us away from the patient. This brings it back. If I image you, you and I have a direct connection together. Not only that, but I can scan that, show it to you, and together you can see what's wrong, 
and we can begin that process of how to make you better. I had a very interesting experience. I actually diagnosed my own tumor with this device, doing FDA clearance. And I learned a very special thing about imaging. It's all about time. We wait for everything, and time is this ubiquitous thing that makes the patients unhappy, your family unhappy because you're waiting to find out, the doctor unhappy because we want to start treatment, the healthcare system unhappy because wait is dollars. We didn't invent a diagnostic machine, we invented a time machine. Because now you have instant answers to questions and you can start treatment better. And it doesn't matter the disease state. From before you're born to the day you die, in almost every single entity, ultrasound can be helpful. So it's no longer a destination, it's a device in your hand. So we then put this device on a chip, we attached it to a phone, and this is how easy this is to use. Plug it into the phone, you have an app running, you pick on here what setting. So if I want to scan, for instance, the vascular exam, I'm a vascular surgeon, kind of partial to that exam, and then I can actually select a different mode, so we have B mode, M mode, color Doppler. I'll pick color Doppler, because I love color. And I can right here in front of you, in front of God and country, scan my own neck. So I'll put the device up against my neck. Lo and behold, blood flow. It's an incredibly encouraging thing to see that you actually have blood flow to your own brain. <laughs> See if I can make the picture really pretty. It's hard actually to scan and talk at the same time. So with one simple device, very quickly up to my neck, I can see they have blood flow. And candidly in my own story, I had a little lump in my neck that I could barely feel, didn't think anything of it, I had a cold. And then I realized I have an entire imaging system sitting in my hand. Maybe I should try it. <laughs> so I put it up against my neck and oh my gosh, there was a metastatic tumor. But what that did for me, it did two things. First of which is, I can absolutely assure you I would have ignored it for an extended period of time. I didn't. Sent the image to my doc who said, come home, knew you're in trouble, biopsied it's cancer, and I had treatment much quicker than I ever would have, and it probably reduced the level of treatment that I need. So that was great. So I saw real time how effective that could be. Now the other really interesting thing in having this on a single phone is I can move between settings very quickly. So if you can think where this device is commonly used is in emergency settings, and you want to scan multiple things very quickly. So plugging in, unplugging the device with different probes isn't great. So I can very quickly, for instance, I can move and I'll scan lung. Another great scan, easy to do. I'm not going to get undressed, though. But again, I'll put it right up to my chest, and now I have lung imaging. I better get some gel on here. Why is that important? So lung imaging is really interesting. It's one of those conditions for instance, where actually having something at your fingertips is really important. And so you can find out if you have a pneumothorax, for instance, and you can see good imaging scanning. Now, the cool thing about this device, if you've seen any ultrasound systems, it looks like the control system of the Battlestar Galactica to run them. In this device, all you really have is depth, and you can adjust that. The gain is left and right with my fingers, and you can see the numbers changing and adjust that. Once that's done, I can actually change the depth, if I do this right, by just moving up and down on the device. So the cool thing about this is, as you move up and down on this device, it changes not only depth, but it changes frequency and harmonics. So with a single device, you can scan superficially with lung for something called lung sliding for a pneumothorax. You can go deep to look for something called B lines. And B lines are indicative of extra fluid within the heart. Now, we're going to get to why that's so important. So a year ago, we introduced this device. And it's been a very interesting year. We won a number of awards. Some of the cool ones are, because this device is so easy to use, we won an Apple Design Award, first medical device to do so. South by Southwest, the best one in there. And just recently, Time Magazine, top 100 inventions of the year. And that is because the device is easy to use. It has a tremendous impact on this. So we've, we've captured the part of it's expensive. It's now only $2,000, a fraction of the cost of every other ultrasound system. It's really affordable as a personal device, so cost. We've dealt with the issue of versatility, so you can use it in a lot of different settings. Leslie, how easy is it to capture images and interpret those? So in addition to that fact, we actually have coupled with this artificial intelligence tools to guide you to get the right image, 
and to automate the interpretation process. And we have those tools. The first tool we release is for cardiac. So I'll actually be scanning, and it'll give me a red, yellow, green, how good is my image. When I get a good image, it'll automatically segment the left ventricle and spit out an ejection fraction. This is a tool that will be released shortly. We've just about to release a bladder tool, which is really kind of incredible. You essentially put the device right down in the middle, go to your belly button, move down, and it will automatically find the bladder, scan, and then spit out in a three-dimensional image of the bladder and give you urine volume. Now, incredibly powerful tool. I kid the team, I said, the way I want to use this is, listen, how many of you have said to your kids before you left to go on a trip, does anybody need to go to the bathroom? <laughs> Nobody needs to go, but 20 minutes into that ride, somebody's got to go. I want the potty pal, where I can test my kids before they go. You, you need to go to the bathroom, go. Now, I say that a little bit in jest, but the reality is we know this device is incredibly helpful in healthcare environments. We've used it in major tertiary centers. In fact, all of the top 100 hospitals in the United States have this already. With all kinds of different specialties, every single medical specialty with the exception of psychiatrists. It's now introduced in 19 different countries around the world, and it's changing. But we didn't want to stop there. We also have it in the hands of EMS personnel. So before you get into the hospital, whether you're gaining access for an IV or looking for cardiac standstill, those physicians have the tool in hand. We're working with professional sports franchises so that they can use the MSK setting for their sports teams and they travel from team to team, from city to city. Now, why is that important? Well, that's where you pull an AWS. One of the critical parts of our device, the device, the image, where does that image go? For butterfly, it goes up in the cloud for all of our issues. Now, that cloud becomes a critical piece of this equation. If you've got to store images, and if you have to store those images at every single institution, 40 million healthcare workers around the world, how in the world would you configure that? How in the world would you scale that kind of operation? The only way that's possible is if you have a partner like AWS where you can efficiently build that tool with a small startup team and create a secure environment up on the cloud that's now available for everybody. And that's what we've been able to do. And that cloud becomes a critical part of our security. So we're HIPAA compliant. We're meeting all the security demands everyone has. It's also a vehicle for communication between physicians. It brings the world together under one platform. So we mentioned artificial intelligence and deep learning. Why is that so important? Images go to the cloud. Those cloud images become the source for machine learning algorithms. And then what happens is the expertise of the best physicians are not isolated to just that doctor. That expertise goes into the device, through the cloud, so now the device, with our new tools, becomes as smart as the best doctor. And the beauty of that is, is we deal with the issue of health quality, and more importantly for those of us that are passionate, healthcare inequality. Two thirds of the world has no access to medical imaging. Every 90 seconds, somewhere in the world, a woman dies as complications from childbirth. Think about that. So we think here in the United States, or even England, you can think any of the 19 countries, a wife is pregnant, she's being born, what are we thinking about? Is it a boy or a girl? What should I name her? In these developing world is, are they going to survive delivery? Am I going to be alive to see my child grow up? This changes that. Because you know what they don't have? They don't have medical imaging. What do they have? This. They have smartphones. So that's a big reason why the Gates Foundation has been a credible partner with us, working with us to help develop the right applications to get out there in the world. Bridge to Health is another great partner. We have, we've been in 20 developing countries already, making a difference. Pediatric pneumonia, huge issue around the world. This is a great device to diagnose pneumonia. So incredible, powerful tool. So you have a device that's affordable, that's versatile, that allows you to capture images to make image capture, image interpretation easier. We store it in a secure cloud with the help of AWS, make that available to everyone around the world. Now you have a device that changes the lives of people everywhere. A remarkable change. Now, I don't know how many of you actually have something called a pet at home. Now, if it's like my house, and I will confess, maybe I shouldn't do this on camera, we've got 10. Actually, more than 10, that's just the dogs. Now, we have 10 because my other half's the president of the regional SPCA. And what we know very much is that people are much more willing to spend money to take care of their animals than they are on themselves. So we developed the IQ Vet, an incredibly powerful tool that's much like this device, but custom settings for our pet animals, our companion animals, as well as 
equine, great meats with sources, and exotics around the world. And we've scanned lions and tigers, not bears yet, <laughs> sharks and turtles and lizards and snakes. But you find that, and the reason I bring that up is it's such a powerful tool to change things. I mean, do you think about this? Since the beginning of medicine, we've looked for a way to give a window into the body. How do we peel around the skin to find answers? Two thirds of medical dilemmas, where we don't know the answer just by asking you questions and examining you, can be solved by simple imaging modalities. And now we have on our hands a device can do exactly that. So what is the future? Well, we talked a little bit about my little potty pal. If you really think about it, if you have a device that's affordable, easy to use, powered by artificial intelligence, you could see a future where we bring it home. Now everybody, when I hear that, they all go, oh my God, you can't do imaging at home. Think back in time when we first had glucometers for testing for diabetes, and I was in that time period, only be done by specialized trained people inside the hospital. Now everybody does it at home, and it's much more effective. Congestive heart failure, for instance, number one health problem in the United States, consumes the most resources, and it's really as simple as, do I got too much fluid on board or not enough? And those questions can be answered by scan the lung, count the B lines. If there's too many, give a diuretic, give Lasix. Why do they have to come to the emergency room or the doctor's office to answer that question? They have to do that because we don't have imaging modalities that are useful at home. So today, we have studies going on right now with patients scanning themselves at home, connecting with their physicians so that you can figure out how much fluid's there and we treat them the right way dramatically lowering the cost. And if you think about a single trip to the emergency room or to the hospital, that's a thirteen to $15,000 trip. How many of these did you just buy for this? Unbelievable difference. So there are, if you, how many of you are late at night, can't sleep? How many bladder commercials have you seen for in and out catheters at home? Get your special catheter. All of those people that have neurogenic bladders just catheterized by time. That's it. And we all know, all of us, they can be. Sometimes you have to be a lot, sometimes not much. You don't want a catheter any more than you need to or any less because it raises the risk of infection. A bladder scanner at home that tells you it's time to catheterize is a very powerful tool. So you can see applications going to the home. We're working with the FDA on how do we make it safe and effective but usable to improve care. Anytime I can get my treatment at home and not come to see me, the doctor, I'm happy. And I think healthcare will be better for that. And we'll certainly see those same kind of changes around the world. So Butterfly, an incredible invention, born out of a, a great inventor who saw a need for his own child, who could reach out to all of us who understands that medical imaging is a destination and shouldn't be, and if we created a world where this device is as available as a stethoscope, it'll be a much better world for all of us. So I want to thank AWS for giving us this platform. I'm happy if we've got a few moments to answer any questions anybody has, and thank you for your attention. So you were a visionary and saw the value of this very early in the game. Yes. So you use this every day? Yeah, so he said he saw about this three years ago, put an order in for it instantly, now you have it in your hands, and you use it every day. So the question is, he's a software developer. One of the things that we are doing, and this is through the Gates Foundation, is working on developing a software development kit to open up our platform so that people can develop apps. Now, we've developed an app for ejection fraction. We've got one for bladder. We're working on one from beelines, but we can't do them all. And there's great opportunities. Gates Foundation is working on one for gestational age. So we're in development of doing just that to open up this world to you. We believe the device should be in everybody's hands. The application should be at the discretion of the rest of the smart people like yourself who can develop things. So we'll be very interested to work with you. Any other questions? How many of you are actually going to go out and buy one right there? Yes, sir. So do I envision a device being at home that costs $2,000? 
I think there is applications for this in very selected circumstances. So for instance, if I can put this in the hands of a heart failure patient and reduce readmissions, having a device at home for $2,000 makes all the economic sense in the world, both from the cost as well as the quality of care that we deliver. And I think we can ultimately hope to show we improve survival. I can think of other applications, rural situations in OB, where someone is miles and miles and miles away from their doctor's office. You lease a device, for instance, for the duration of the pregnancy. Now remember, we're going to have very tight controls on this. Another beauty of having the cloud and be able to control software is let's say you're a, a, a pregnant woman out there, you have the device at home, you feel some kind of issue, it's 200 miles to the doctor, call the doctor, the doctor sends you a code, and this is the world we envision, sends you a code, turns on the device, she scans herself, the images go right back to the doctor, and the doctor can make a decision whether or not to come in. That's worth $2,000 to me. And so we're looking for those applications where safety and efficacy make sense, where it makes economic sense for healthcare in general, for that to be the case. And we're working with both the FDA to actually go about that in the right way, as well as insurance carriers to give them the proof where they can say, this actually makes sense, I want to cover this like they do glucometers. Thank you, Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Bert. Thank you all very much. <laughs>